Voyager 1 was envisioned as part of NASA's grand tour of the solar system, which planned to visit all of the outer planets, including then-planet Pluto. Pioneer 10 was sent out to Jupiter, while Pioneer 11 had been sent to Jupiter and Saturn, marking the start of the grand tour. The high expenses of each of these one-of-a-kind spacecraft forced NASA to abandon the grand tour in favor of Mariner Jupiter Saturn, later renamed Voyager. Which Voyager launched first? Voyager 2 was released before Voyager 1. It left Earth on August 20, 1977, with Voyager 1 following on September 5. Because the two spacecrafts had distinct paths, Voyager 2 had to launch first in order to align perfectly for each target, albeit Uranus and Neptune weren't formally part of the route yet, whereas Voyager 1 had to launch quicker in order to reach Jupiter first. Although the primary goals of both voyages were to visit Jupiter and Saturn, the engineering team constructed the voyages so that they might continue on to Uranus and Neptune. A near flyby of Titan, Saturn's biggest moon, was critical in mission preparation. Titan has a thick, mostly nitrogen atmosphere, and the atmospheric pressure is 50% higher than on Earth. If Voyager 1 was successful at Titan, Voyager 2 will bypass Titan and go to Uranus, then Neptune. After all of the planetary contacts, including a close flyby of Neptune with Voyager 2, NASA called the project the Voyager Interstellar Mission. The most iconic photograph, as well as the golden record. On February 14, 1990, Voyager 1 made history by returning to its original trajectory and photographing the pale blue dot. The photograph of a small dot against the background of space was shot at an unprecedented distance of 6 billion kilometers, or 40.5 astronomical units. It was one of the images of Voyager 1's family portrait, which included a mosaic of 60 frames and frames of six planets, revealing their relative positions. Earth is smaller than a single pixel in the famous pale blue dot photograph. It wasn't until February 2003, when Voyager 1 turned off its camera, that scientists started to wonder whether the spacecraft was reaching the edge of the sun's energetic effect. They also started to wonder whether the spacecraft had reached the point in the solar system when solar winds approach subsonic speeds, known as the termination shock, which occurs immediately before an object reaches interstellar space. This was difficult to establish since the solar wind detector has been inactive since 1990. What is the limit of interstellar space? Voyager 1 reached cosmic purgatory, or the outermost layer of the bubble that surrounds our solar system, in December 2011, at a distance of around 11 billion miles from Earth. Charged particles from the Sun are less intense, the Sun's magnetic field is more compressed and high-energy particles leak from the solar system into interstellar space. The interplay between interstellar space and the Sun's energy fields is becoming increasingly visible at this time. One of Voyager 1's equipment was designed to detect plasma waves. The denser the plasma, the greater the frequency of these waves. For nine years, there had been no plasma when Voyager 1 sailed through the heliosphere's bubble. They were protected from the plasma, but eventually, in August 2012, there was a plasma detection that was cooler and suggested entering the interstellar medium, indicating entry into interstellar space. Now, as Voyager 1 and 2 continue their journey into space, they are discovering new things. They are becoming more dense. The farther Voyager 1 travels into interstellar space, the denser the waves of interstellar plasma seem to get. Voyager 1 is on an unknown and perilous mission into deep space. It and its sister probe, Voyager 2, are the farthest human-made objects from our planet, having traveled beyond the solar system's boundaries and into the interstellar medium. Anything may go wrong at such a distance. So when Voyager 1 began sending back odd, garbled gibberish instead of telemetry data in May of this year, NASA engineers were not surprised and continued to view it as arguably the greatest successful space project of all time. But that is not how NASA operates. Nonetheless, 
they began working on a remote diagnostic and repair for the record-breaking spacecraft. They are now victorious, four months later. Voyager 1 has returned to service and is speaking with ground control as if nothing had occurred. In truth, the solution was very easy, or as simple as anything can be with a 22-hour communications lag in either direction and billions of kilometers between. What became of Voyager 1? The 45-year-old spacecraft looked to be performing well in interstellar space, relaying massive amounts of data back to Earth. However, in mid-May, the Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, responsible for keeping Voyager 1's high-gain antenna pointing toward Earth, began beaming home incomprehensible jumbles of data instead of the regular bulletins on the spacecraft's health and status. From our perspective, the spaceship looked to have suffered an electronic form of aphasia, a disorder that causes the loss of fluent speech. Even more perplexing for engineers, despite the spacecraft's strange status updates, Voyager 1 looked to be in fine shape. The spacecraft's radio signal remained strong and constant, confirming that the antenna was still pointed toward Earth, and not in the orientation the AACS claimed to NASA in the reports. Similarly, Voyager 1's scientific systems continued to acquire and send data as normal, with no peculiarity influencing the AACS. Furthermore, whatever went wrong with the AACS did not trigger a fault prevention mechanism meant to put the spaceship in safe mode when there is a problem. Fortunately, NASA engineers discovered the problem. They might also use the diagnosis to find a cure. The solution. It found out that the AACS had begun transmitting telemetry data via an onboard computer that had ceased operating years before. The damaged data was caused by the deceased computer. All NASA engineers had to do was instruct the AACS to utilize the appropriate computer to relay its data home. But there's still a problem. Determining what led the AACS to transfer computers in the first place will be the next task. According to NASA, the system most likely got an incorrect order from another onboard computer. While they claim it is not a serious issue for Voyager 1's well-being at the moment, the underlying cause must be located and rectified to avoid future strangeness. Voyager 1 continues to live on. Voyager 1 has already traveled more than 23.4 billion kilometers or 14.6 billion miles beyond Earth and continues to travel. Voyager 1 has spent the past decade drifting in interstellar space, beyond the reach of our sun's magnetic field. The field shielded the vessel from cosmic rays and other interstellar radiation in the same way that Earth's magnetic field shields us from high-energy particles and radiation from the sun. When one of those high-speed energetic particles impacts a computer chip, it may create minor memory mistakes that mount up over time and it's realistic to anticipate that to be a concern for Voyager 1's onboard computers as well. The spacecraft are both about 45 years old, which is significantly above the mission planner's expectations. We're also in interstellar space, a high radiation region in which no spacecraft has ever sailed. We'll have to wait and see what unexpected problems and surprises await Voyager on its next mission. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also take a look at some of our other videos. Until next time.